Good evening. For those that don't know who I am, my name is Mark Robitel, and I will be your next professor. I am so looking forward to meeting you and getting to know you a little bit better. Um, actually, a lot better because I don't think I know anybody in the class right now. Uh, I've been with Sandy in the MSL o MSOL program since last May, April, May. Um, I've really enjoyed it. I've taught the 520 class. I also teach 650, which is um, sustainability of innovation and competitive advantage. So you'll get me twice. You'll, um, I believe you'll get me again in May and June. But I do look forward to seeing you for if you're interested in who I am. I grew up in Connecticut. I grew up in Wethershield, just across the river. Um, stayed and lived my whole life in Connecticut. I've been in, I would lived in Newington. And I've been in South Windsor since 1998. I'm married. I have two wonderful children. My youngest turns six on Saturday. Keeps me quite occupied, especially Saturday morning and Sunday morning going to hockey practice, which is just a joy to go into an ice arena in the middle of the winter. <laughs> just a joy. But uh, it is something that I do enjoy because I love watching his face and watching him um, improve his skating abilities. I spent most of my career, all my professional career at Aetna. I was with Aetna for 23 years. They went through an early retirement program. I opted to take it so I can pursue some other uh, lifelong ambitions, one of which is teaching and getting in front of uh, students and sharing my experience. While at Aetna, I had a variety of different backgrounds, all centered around finance and strategy, but I was in the IT organization. And I went through the IT organization at a really interesting time. Anybody hear of something called Y2K? So Y2K was a very interesting time and I was purchasing all the hardware and software for the company and we had to remediate all our, our code. So if you don't know what Y2K was, it was a big, really nothing. <laughs> but we spent billions and trillions of dollars as the, you know, throughout the world to buy technology and to remediate code, all because in the 1960s, people weren't thoughtful to put a four digit date code, they only put two digits because it's only 1960, so let's put 60 or 61 or 62, not thinking that you're gonna to get to 1999, and then what do you put? You put zero, zero. Well, when you're an insurance company and you have effective dates for policies, that zero, zero looks like 1900. And if you, that's your effective date, and it's really 2000 and your birthday, it just really messes up the way that you pay cl claims. It really wouldn't work. So we spent billions of dollars to go through and remediate that. I loved it because I got to see a lot of um, expansion at the time. So it gave me some great experience to understand how business runs, profit and loss, and all that good stuff. I then spent some time in our corporate procurement. I created medical products for a while. My last stint within the company was supporting our medical management and working with some of our largest customers. So I had the opportunity to go out and share what our medical management programs are. So 23 year career was extremely rewarding to me. It gave me the opportunity to actually you know, be here some, some years later to be able to teach. Um, I look forward to it. The classes we've had so far have just been fantastic. I think you'll get a lot out of it. Um, so the data-driven decision-making is a really interesting one. Outside of some IT folks in the room, anybody follow some uh, a company called Facebook? Have you been hearing about what's going on with Facebook? They've used data and they've sold that data. Well, we're gonna teach you and you're gonna learn how, what kind of questions can you ask about that data to gain some insights to provide competitive advantage. That's really what the class is about. We're not gonna teach you the mechanics on how to actually analyze it in, in the form, in, in the functions to actually go through and pull that information, but more of a leader, we wanna teach you to think about the types of questions you can, you can ask. So it's gonna be a great, I think it's gonna be a great opportunity for you to start to think differently. Um, I will tell you, you're gonna get scared because if you don't know how data is being used today, you will quickly learn how it's being used. We'll share some real life examples of how Fitbit has solved crimes. About three months ago, you may have heard about it, but a murder was solved because of a Fitbit. I'm not gonna take it all away. We'll share that information with you in about um, eight weeks from now. But you'll see how that data can be used. So I'm really looking forward to seeing y'all in just a mere few weeks right after the new year. But with that, any questions for me? It's gotta be one or two.
There is no math. We will go through some computations. We're not making it technical in the math sense. Um, so no, you won't have to do any, anything more than finger math. Is it going to help you on a poker table? Well, if you can use and, and build out an algorithm, it may, but um, I highly doubt it will, but it may give you some questions to ask your data scientists to help you with a poker table. <laughs> or I'm just gonna go based on luck like I did so far. Well, for, for some people that works, many people that doesn't. So I can't help you say it's gonna directly help you on a poker table. Questions about me? My experience? Vast experience at Aetna. Um, I also, uh, on a few boards, so I'm the chair of the local Salvation Army, uh, the Greater Hartford Area Services. So it's, uh, that's really rewarding because I get to you know, give back to the community. That's another passion of mine. Uh, so I'm the chair of the advisory board. I've been on since 2009 and really helping with the programs. What do you think of when you think about Salvation Army? Just curious. Bell ringers? Yeah, everybody does. It's actually much more vast than that, but um, I won't get into that detail now. Other questions? I'm also an avid skier, avid golfer. I'm a president of a ski club with about 3,500 members. After I, if, skiers? Oh, no, I was love it. Say I'm a fellow South Bay Excellent, are you still there? No, okay, N neighbor. Yeah, great town. I feel like I've grown up there. It seems like yesterday I moved there, but that was 1998, so. Anything, any other questions? Who's going to do their first, who's doing the TED Talk first? <laughs> Excellent! You're going to love it. You're going to love it. You're going through all of them? Half of them. Half of them. Then, in other words, get off the stage, let the TED Talks begin, so.